happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> it's, you know, that special day of the week where we talk Kung Fu, of course. And today we are covering one of the movies, kind of the special version of a movie in the Criterion Lone Wolf and Club. <laughs> Lone Wolf and Cub box set that we got from Bushido Blues. So you, you don't want to go anywhere. I'm sure I'm going to misspeak about 97 more times in this fantastical Friday video. But don't go anywhere. We are going to talk about something fantastic and start the journey of this box set today. Let's go. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Previously on the Nerdy Ronin Network. Hey, Squeaky. What were you asking me about uh, Bruno Mars music? A song you liked and you had a question? Yeah. No. No. Ver Vers Versace? The song Bruno Mars is singing is not about ramen or wine. It's Versace on the floor. And the... That's a designer label. Oh my goodness. Happy Kung Fu Friday. That's right. One of my favorite days of the week. This means that the weekend is upon us. And the work week is done. And we are we're talking Kung Fu, baby. You can't say no to Kung Fu. Now, a long time ago, a little history real quick, real quick, real quick, like and subscribe if you haven't already. You know, you don't want to miss this. It's awesome. In the description down below are all our links, our merch page, our website, codes for coffee to get you a little better deal than everybody else. So be sure to check that out. Now, a little history. A while back, Bushido Blue, Bushido Blues accidentally bought the Region B box set of Lone Wolf and Cub. And I happen to have a region free 4K player. So he bought himself the American version because he does not and sent me this as a little gift. And it's been on my samurai shelf for months. And I kind of just forgot about it because originally I wanted to review the movies in order. That being said, Today, I'm going out of order and reviewing the special film included in the box set that is not a part of the series. Theoretically. Okay? We'll take a look real quick. Here's the box. It's fantastic. It's beautiful artwork. Alright, there's the back with the movies on it. Notice the one we're talking about today is not on here. You can pause it and look. <laughs> Comes with a booklet. Has a bunch of stuff on it. It comes with it comes with the movies and another cool little I'll open it up and show it to you. My apologies. It comes in the really cool anyway. So here's the thing. In the in the Lone Wolf and Cub series, there are six movies. Alright? <clears throat> the movie we're talking about today. An American company took the first two movies, splashed, cut them up, edited them, spliced them together to make an Americanized version. Two movies to, made it into one movie called Shogun Assassin. Okay? Let's look at it. Shogun Assassin, 1980, rated R, hour and 25 minutes, when the wife of the Shogun's decapitator is murdered, and he's ordered to commit suicide by the paranoid Shogun, he and his four-year-old son escape and become assassins for hire, embarking on a journey of blood and violent death. Starring Tomasaburu, Buro, Tomasaburu, Buro, Wakayama, sorry guys, uh, Keio Matsuo, Minoru, Minoru Oki, <laughs> directed by Robert Houston and Kenji Masumi. Now, obviously the original movies was by Kenji Masumi and Robert Houston directed the, the splashed up version here. 
Uh, written by Kazuo Koiki and Goseki Kojima and Robert Houston once again, writing parts of the edit because they added things. And this movie is dubbed in English, so it's just in English, all right? <clears throat> so that that's the history of where this movie comes from. Now, <clears throat> if you've never seen the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, they are extremely bloody, a little bit odd. There's some nudity, all right? There's, they're just old school, gritty kung fu, like slice and dice, the red paint blood, you know, from the 70s, spraying everywhere, you know, when you cut somebody's head off and it's just a fountain of blood. Like, it, these are gory, y'all. <laughs> and Bushido told me this movie was one of his favorites that he remembers back in the day because of the, like, techno, like, or synthesizer soundtrack and the weirdness of it. And I have to agree. The movie is just plain odd, but the story makes sense. Now, Lone Wolf and Cub as a whole was created as a as a manga. Alright, or manga, or however you say it. It was basically books. Comic books, if you will. Anime comic books, if you will. Call it what you want. It was awesome. About a samurai and his son who travel around and he assassinates people, but the whole time he's trying to be killed by ninjas and things that the Shogun sends after him. So it's crazy, but great. Great storytelling. Great acting. And I'm excited to get into the six original films, but on Bushido's comment about that movie, Shogun Assassin being his, like, the most, the one he remembers the most from his young age. I wanted to check that out first. In the box set, it's on the third disc with a bunch of special features, not necessarily about that movie, but in general. And the disc itself was great. Has some good stuff on it. Looks great. It's, I have an affinity for the red paint blood. It annoys me, but I also love it at the same time because I remember older movies like Dirty Harry and the, just the red paint blood just, it's so from a certain time, from a, a way movies used to be. <laughs> and I enjoy it. Like it's, it's, it's like a 50-50 battle in my head. <laughs> the sword fights are fantastic. The assassination attempts and the, the thwarting of those it looks great. And the fact that this was taken and spliced all up from two movies to make one solid piece, that's some talented stuff, even if it's weird by today's standard or odd by today's standard. So, I don't think if you were going to watch these movies, I don't think I would start with this one. I would watch the original six in order, personally, and then end it with this movie, the the way it was done, you know. But, I did want to check this one out first. I, I And to be fair, I've seen bits and pieces of this one before, but I've never watched it in its entirety. So it was a fun time to sit down and watch it. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe there's anything different in fact, I know there's not in the Region A or Region B box set. They're the same. But make sure if you're going to buy this box set, because this box set is fantastic for the price. Make sure you get Region, region A if you live in America, or you're not going to be able to watch it. You will literally be buying a coaster. Three of them, in fact, because it's a three-disc set. So that's it. That's today's video. And I have to say, it's wonderful. Super fun to watch. There's some, like I said, there's some odd bits and there's some nudity and it's extremely gory. Nerdy Wife caught a glimpse of it and was like, what are you watching? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> so I had to tell her, you know, give her the context. And then she was like, I guess that makes sense. Right, so it is, it is odd. It is different. You know, 1980 was a different time altogether. And I would say this kind of leans more into late 70s. I know it came out in 1980, but 
the way they put it all together is more reminds me of the 70s <laughs> in American cinema. So there you have it. I, I have things to do. I've got a weekend to start. And we've got some great stuff planned for next week. So, and I'm also going to the theater this weekend to see a new Indian cinema movie that's coming here. I'm so excited. All right. I hope you guys have had a great week. I hope you're going to have a great weekend. And I hope you join us back again on Monday. When I don't know what we're talking about, but it's going to be a movie. I can promise you that. All right. From Michael the Microphone, Bob, squeaky chair in the back, and this big fat nerd. <laughs> we'll see you then. Oh, 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 oh,